Hello everyone, happy Halloween, and welcome back to Phantom Files. This is not the video that I was hoping to drop, and I know the video that I'm currently working on. I knew it wasn't going to be ready for Halloween, and I wanted to do something special for all of you. I want to thank all of you for sticking around as I go through this really crazy moment in my life. And I thought tonight that I would share a spooky story time experience. The most recent one that I've had yet. So I had, I was in a car accident on September 3rd. I was headed to Taco Bell to get some breakfast burritos and I was T-boned by a truck. I my light had turned green i entered the intersection and i just saw motion in the corner of my eye and when i turned to look the the grill of that person's truck was right there in my window and i didn't even have time to brace for impact it was just i let everything go because i knew that there was nothing stopping this that i was going to go through with it no matter if i wanted to or not um I don't remember blacking out, but after I saw that, the next thing I know, I'm looking up at the ceiling of the, the cab of my car, and I had a man leaning into my window. I believe he was a first responder, and he was like, hold on, hold on, they're the ENTs, they're almost here, hold on, and my lungs would not expand. It was like I couldn't breathe. And it was like, you know, it's not gonna do me any good if the ENTs come here in a minute or two when I can't breathe. I could suffocate right here. But my lungs miraculously just, I felt them expand and I could finally take in air. And about that time, the ENT came in through the other, the other side of my car. And to get me out, they said, okay, can you, can you move? Can you get out? And I said, well, I can move my legs, but there's something wrong with my right hip. Like I can't, I can't get out of this seat. So they ended up cutting off the door to my car to get me out. They rushed me to the hospital. I had called my mom and I said, you know, please meet me there. I've been in a car accident and, and she arrived and they took x-rays found out that I had all of those fractures, rib number 12 on the left side, uh, vertebrae L2 through L5, and multiple fractures on the right side of my pelvis. And I remember laying in bed the next day and I was worried about my car. It's like, what am, what am I going to do? How am I, how am I financially going to get through all of this? And my mom said, don't don't worry about it you know I'm sure we can fix up your car and I said mom you don't understand they they had to cut off the door to my car to get me out and she's like okay we'll put a new car door and I'm like <laughs> no my my car is is totaled it is it is gone you know there there's no fixing this the next week she saw the car she went to the wreckage yard, she got things out, and when she saw the state of my car, she was like, you are lucky to be alive. And that is not an understatement. Like, I truly believe that I wasn't supposed to survive that wreck. I'm thankful I did, and I'm thankful I'm still here but it's a miracle that I am still around. And another thing that just blew my mind was that my mom said that there were shards of glass everywhere, like an inch of glass was just covering my floorboard and yet there wasn't a scratch on me. Broken bones, yes, bruises, yes, not a single scratch with all of that glass. At the end of that first week, they moved me into the rehab center of the hospital. Now, this is kind of where the paranormal stuff begins. 
And I will say that out of all of the places to investigate that are the most active are like insane asylum hospitals, prisons, churches, graveyards. Those are like your key top, the most active places. And knowing that people have come and gone through that hospital, I, I knew that there was a chance that the hospital was active. I was not, however, expecting my rehab room to be haunted. <laughs> so, late that Friday night, they wheeled me in. The sun had already gone down, and the only light that I could control was the overhead light right over my bed. And I don't sleep in complete darkness. Like, I always have a night light on of some kind. I don't sleep well in total darkness. And so with all the other lights turned off because the nurses, they were like, okay, good night, you know, turn off the lights as they leave. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I must keep all the lights on. <laughs> and as I'm starting to get scared and I can only control this one light, I'm like, fine. I am determined to fall asleep with this light blaring in my face. It doesn't matter. I am keeping this light on. And as I'm laying there with my eyes closed, this shadow passes over my face from left to right. And I was like, no, I did not see that. I did not see that. That was nothing. That was nothing. There was nothing there. And then on the right side of my bed, <laughs> I saw this shadow creep up still with my eyes closed. And I can tell that there was an outline of a head and shoulders and it was looking at me. And I was like, I am not opening my eyes. I don't care if I'm a paranormal investigator. I am not ready for this. And I am keeping my eyes closed. And then the shadow slowly seeped back down into the floor. Like it, it went down the side of my bed toward the floor. As I opened my eyes, you know how all those hospitals have a dividing privacy curtain. And there was that shadow figure by the curtain and it sank back into the wall behind the curtain. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not seeing this. This is not happening. And it's just my imagination, just, just my overactive imagination. And as I looked, of course, my my room door was cracked open and you could see some light coming in through the hallway. And I saw the shadow move across that light into the hallway. And I thought, no, 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 no. Somebody was in the hallway. They passed through my door and they blocked out the light as they walked by. It was not the shadow. It was nothing. It was nothing. And so I miraculously talked myself into falling asleep. And then the following day, the day nurse came in and I can't remember exactly how we ended up on this subject, but I brought up seeing a shadow and I said, yeah, you wouldn't by chance know if this floor is active or if anybody had any experiences, do you? And she goes, you saw it too? Yes. Yes, I did. So what do you know? And she says, well, there was a patient a few months back who could barely speak English and she kept saying, pray to Jesus, pray to Jesus, pray to Jesus. And she refused to sleep in her bed and stayed the night at the nurse's station. And one evening, the nurse looked inside her bedroom with all the lights turned off, not bedroom, but rehab room, and saw the shadow just dart across like just below the ceiling from one wall and into the other <laughs> and then another nurse walked in a few days later also confirming that there is in fact activity on that floor because another patient sat there quietly and watched their water bottle slide along the bed table you know the, those like rectangular tables that the hospitals use for all the food trays yeah, like there was no leaning or angling of that table and she just watched it slide by. So then I was released from the hospital and then home health started coming in and checking in on me. And one of the home health nurses came over and I told her about it. She too also works at that hospital and 
also has seen the shadow and she goes let me guess you were in room 460 yes yes i was and she says yeah that's one of the active rooms <laughs> leave it to my luck to be to be relocated to a haunted room I even did a small EVP session. If there's something in the room with me, can you move that curtain? Can you move it along the track up there? Can you move the wheelchair? Okay, I guess it's just me in here. I hope everyone has a freakishly fantastic Halloween. It is, this is my favorite holiday and it kills me to be stuck inside. I might, might be able to decorate my walker and still go trick or treating <laughs> as one of those cranky old people. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> now I can terrorize. <laughs> the neighborhood kids as the cranky lady with a walker. <laughs> anyway, I love all of you. Happy Halloween. I want to thank all of you for staying to the end of this video, if you did. So I wanted to kind of explain why I haven't dropped a new video. So first things first, for the longest time I needed chairs with a backing to them. And my computer is in my bedroom and I usually sit at the edge of the bed editing everything and I just couldn't do that for the longest time. I had in-home health care coming and going from my home. I've had to deal with the the legalities of my my injuries and the loss of my car. I've been torn in so many different ways and my mother has graciously come over to my house to take care of me. Um, she is now mostly at her home but for a few weeks there she was staying the night and helping me in and out of bed like I'm still using a walker to walk like I can take three or four steps without a walker but I can't go all day without one quite yet and then on top of all of it a couple of weeks ago I started editing the video I'm like oh now I can Set at the edge of my bed. I don't need anything to support my back. Woohoo, I can do this. And I had just updated the drivers of my video card. And thank you, GeForce, for making some of the functions of Premiere Pro obsolete in your updating of the drivers. So now I need to somehow fix my graphics card in a way to where some of those functions in Premiere Pro start working again. And yes, that does play a big role in this next video because I had taken a camera and angled it down into the dark basement of the Sally house. And I'm trying to see if there's any shadows down there because we did have a strange experience. And without this specific function, 
I don't have clarity of that video, and right now I don't know really what to do. So, I'm troubleshooting it, I'm working on it. Cross your fingers for me because this is driving me absolutely nuts. And on top of it, I got the stomach flu. <laughs> yeah, so from October 26th to well into the 28th, I was sick. Correction. I was sick from October 23rd to October 25th because as the date that I'm recording this, it is October 27th, Friday, right? I hope I got it right now. But I was so sick that I, I couldn't move. I, I tried, but I had the stomach flu every 15 minutes was a whirlwind of, I don't think I even want to discuss that on YouTube. <laughs> Let's just say I wouldn't wish that experience on my worst enemy. Now, that being said, now that I've recovered from the flu and I'm troubleshooting my computer, <laughs> I'm hoping to keep editing the next video because it was an amazing investigation and I want to share it with all of you and this wreck has really set me back so much like it's been crazy and I want to thank all of you for sticking around and for supporting me and for being so understanding love all of you and happy Halloween